Okay, properties of exponents uh, to simplify radicals and rational expressions. So I'm going to go through some things that hopefully you've gone through already. Um, hopefully you've done the radical or the re exponent review that I had earlier. But anyways, um, if I'm multiplying of exponents, so for example, if I have x to the fourth power or x to any power, uh, let's get back up there, times another x to some other power. So. Let's say it is x to the fourth times x to the second. That works out to be x to the four plus two, x to the sixth. So if I have the same base, so they're both x's and I'm multiplying, I can use a shortcut and add the exponents. Okay, now if it's a power of a power where it's x to the fourth raised to the second power, so here's my power raised to another power, the shortcut is that I can take 4 times 2, so it's x to the 8th power. Um, division, okay, again, if they have the same base, and it's very important that they have the same base, and by base I mean they're both x's. If I have x to the 10th on the numerator and x to the 5th power on the denominator, I can take the exponents and subtract them. Okay. Um, with division, though, I like thinking about it this way because sometimes you end up having, let's say, x to the second on top and x to the sixth on the bottom. I think of it this way. Uh, if I have x to the fifth on the bottom, top and the bottom, I cancel out five x's, five x's, I end up with x to the fifth on the numerator. So if I've got x to the second on the top, x to the sixth on the bottom, I take out two factors from the top, two factors from the bottom, I've got x to the fourth on the bottom. So make sure I've got a one there to kind of hold that spot. Um, if you use the subtraction rule on something like this, you end up with x to the negative fourth power because you have two minus six. Well, a negative exponent just means that you have to take the reciprocal, and I don't know why I did that one minus or one over. Okay, so that leads me to a couple of others. Product or quotient of each other. So. So, kind of doing the power of a power, but now let's put a number along with a variable. So that just means that 5 gets cubed, and so will the x. So 125x to the 6. Same thing happens for a fraction. If I've got, um, like, 2 over uh, y to the 4th, okay, that's going to turn into whatever 2 to the 5th is. So 8 times 4, I think that's 32, over y to the 4 times 5, or y to the 20th. Okay, negative exponents. Okay, so anything that is negative in the numerator, and uh, this is the numerator over 1, drops down and becomes a positive exponent, so 1 over 5 squared, or 1 over 25. Um, anything negative in the denominator comes up and to the numerator and becomes positive. So I call it like the moving exponent. Any negative exponent has to move and become positive. And then of course, we've got anything to the zero power is one. But be careful, like parentheses, like five x to the zero power, this actually works out to be five times one or five. Okay, so it's the only the part that's raised to the zero power that becomes one. So, with that being said, let's do that with exponents. Just these exponents happen to be fractions. Okay, so same base. They're both threes. We're multiplying. So, three to the one half plus three halves. Or three to the four halves or second power. So, nine. Four to the three halves times two. So 4 to the 3rd, or 16 times what? 64, I believe. Don't check on that one. Okay, same base, but now we're dividing. So I'm going to take the 5 halves and subtract 1 half. And that's going to become 6 to the 4 halves, or 2, which is 36. Okay, fraction raised to a power, so it becomes 8 to the 1 third and 27 to the 1 third. If you need to make these back into radicals, but I'm pretty sure that the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, 
Uh, rule of thumb, if it is rational, so fractions, keep your answer in fractions. If it's radicals, leave it as radicals. Okay, some properties of radicals. Uh, the product property. Now, they have to have the same index. So, let's say it's the cube root of 5 times the cube root of um, 15. Okay, I can make that the cube root of 5 times 15 or the cube root of 75. I can multiply them together. I can also do it the other way. I can break it apart. Uh, let's say I've got the fourth root of a fraction. So, the fourth root of, say, 4 over, I don't know, 11. That can become the fourth root of 4 over the fourth root of 11. Okay, um, simplest radical form. We did this with square roots and cube roots back in the day. But simplest radical form means there's no perfect nth root. So no pairs or groupings of three or groupings of four, depending on what your nth root is. No fractions underneath the radical, and there's going to be no denominator or radical in the denominator. So something like this, let's say it's a square root of eight. We can pull out perfect square root of four. So that's two square root of two. That's in simplest radical form. Okay, fractions, the square root of one fourth. So the square root of one over the square root of four becomes one over two. So that takes a, care of this simplest radical form. Sometimes though, we do end up with the square root of two in the bottom. So we'll multiply the top and the bottom by a radical two to rationalize that. So the square root of two over two. I got square root of two because that's the square root of four, which turns into two. So those are the things that you look for when it's simplest radical form. And these are some things to think about when you're working with radicals. So if I've got the cube root of 25 times this cube root of 5, I can make that the cube root of 125, which works out to be 5. Okay, fourth root of 64, so 2, 32, 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. So, four of them would be a perfect nth root, so 1, 2 comes out, and it's the fourth root of these two left over, so 2 times 2 gives me 4. That, notice they're both underneath the cube root, I'm dividing, I'll just reduce the fraction by 4, so I get the cube root of 8, which turns into 2. Okay, that's the cube root of 1, but that is, is 1. Okay, now here, it's going to be the fourth root of 7 over the fourth root of 8. Now, I know in the past, we just multiply by the exact same thing on the bottom. But I'm actually going to break down 8 and notice that it's 2 and 4, 2 and 2. So there's 1, 2, 3 twos. I need 4 of them to make it a perfect radical. So I'm going to multiply this by the fourth root of 2. And then I'll have to do the same thing at the bottom. And the idea is that will turn into the fourth root of 16, which is a factor tree of 2, 8, 2, 4, 2, and 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, perfect root is 2. And the top, the fourth root of 7 times 2, 14. It's the simplest radical form. Same base, uh, same base, I'm going to multiply, so I'm going to add those, but I'm going to need a common denominator, so I'm going to take that one half and turn it into 3 over 6, and I'm going to take the one third and change that into 2 6. So that's going to give me 6 to the, and now I've got a common denominator, 5 6. Yep, here, 25, 25, okay, so 25 to the, uh, what would that be, 3 fifths? 3 fifths, but I can't do anything with the division because 25 is not the same thing as 5. So here's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to take 25, because isn't 25 the same thing as 5 squared? So I'll replace it with 5 squared, and I'll keep the 3 fifths, 
And then I've got the five to the three fifths in the bottom here. Okay. Power of a power. So I'm going to multiply those together. So the top becomes, I'm going to go down here because I'm running out of room. Five to the six fifth power over five to the three fifths power. And now that I'm dividing and they're the same base, I can, can subtract them and I get five to the six fifths minus three fifths. So five to the three fifths power. Okay, same thing here, but the four, I'm gonna make two to the second power and that's gonna be cubed times two to the third. And then I'll worry about the negative one third later. So that's two to the six times two to the third. So in the parentheses, I have two to the well, do, 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 ninth, add them together. I'll raise that to the negative one third. Got multiply them together and I get two to the negative third power. Move that down and I get one over two to the positive third. So one over eight. Okay, and part D here, that's a one, but I'm gonna make that one into four over four. They're dividing, so I can subtract the exponents, so six to the one fourth power. Okay. Ah, uh, composite or rough. So I'll look at it this way. Um, this is 64 to the square root, so I'll go 64 to the one half and the cube root is to the one third. So this is gonna turn into um, one six. But here, watch this. Um, if I go innermost, this here is eight, yeah? And the one third is the cube root, so the cube root of eight is two. So maybe it didn't help me to write it as fractions there, because here you can notice that the square root is gonna give you eight, and then the cube root's gonna give you two. Okay, but maybe it'll help out a little bit on this one. So like I go, uh, 27 X to the eighth to the one half to the one third and then I've got that two on the outside well if I'm taking one half times one third times two it doesn't matter what order I do so I'll take two times one half and they'll cancel out so I'm left with 27 X to the eighth raised to the one third which is the same thing as the cube root of 27 x to the eighth. Well, the cube root of 27 is just three. And if I were to break down x to the eighth, that's gonna be x times x times x. There's a grouping of three, one comes out. There's another grouping of three, x comes out. And the two left over stay in. So three x to the second, be careful, put that three up there maybe, x to the third, uh, squared. And there you go. All right, so there's a couple of operations, all basically multiplication division. We'll talk about adding and subtracting a little bit later.